Hey everybody, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill, this is my workshop. And in this week's episode, I had something completely different planned, which I'll talk about in a minute. But I had to do some repair work on my locomotive because I want to get it ready for running in the fall when the weather cools down a little bit here. Actually, I, I did a, a stupid thing and I broke one of my in quick, injector quick start valves. These are the drawings that I got from Fred, my mentor. And I built these valves many years ago. Luckily, when I built them, I built a spare, which was very handy. So that's lesson number one. Always make a spare if you're going to make something complicated. But really um, a cool project. And I, I felt really stupid that I had to uh, replace and repair it. But I've just finished. I just bolted the new one on. And if you stay tuned through the rest of the video, you'll see the repair process and what it looks like finished. And I wanted to point out, if you're interested in this playlist alert, <laughs> high-tech graphics here, as I built these uh, injector quick start valves, this was one of the first things I think I serialized on YouTube. So there's a total of 16 videos that I put on. They're all real short, they're all like two or three minutes and basically showing, mostly show and tell, like what I'm doing, what are the tools, and how I make something. Um, so they're useful, but they're not a lot of active machining stuff on them. But this one, there's a little bit more. This one will be longer, of course, and there's a little bit of active machining. I'll, I'll demonstrate how to make a new seat for the O-ring valve. And um, so stay tuned. This should be an interesting one for this week. If you're interested in live steam at all, um, just looking at the valves and how they're made, it's pretty cool, pretty cool process. And I really enjoyed it. Thanks again, Fred, for sharing your designs with me. It was it was cool to make them, and um, I enjoyed having lunch with uh, Fred and Russ and Pete and Chuck, uh, my buddies. We uh, locally get together about once a month and and visit and catch up on ideas. So, thanks again, guys. That was fun, and I am trying to grow grow the channel. So, if you enjoy this content, please pass the word. Please tell somebody about Metal Mill Fifty Two. Um, at least please give me a thumbs up if you have any questions ask me I'll do my best to answer so thanks again for all the interesting comments and suggestions and I appreciate your participation and interest in the channel hope you enjoy this week's episode stay tuned we'll see you next week thanks okay folks so this week has been an unusual one for me I'm so excited about getting that drilling spindle done I wanted to move on and work take the, uh, the pieces that I machined last week and make this a milling or grinding spindle. So if you watched last week's episode, you saw how I machined the outside of this part, got it so the bearings will fit in there, a nice press fit. And I had even gotten out my little Sherline WW collets because I had an idea that if I made the spindle to the same dimensions for the uh, this, this utility spindle, let's call it, uh, milling and grinding, I could use both my corn grinding wheels, which have an arbor just like this, and I could use these little WW collets that I got from Sherline that go from 1 16th of an inch up to 5 16th for doing little milling jobs in the lathe. So I was all excited to do that. I'd even kind of sketched out some plans. I studied the Joe Pye drilling a deep hole video, which one of the viewers suggested, and that is great stuff. Um, Joe Pye is one of my machining heroes, and I will definitely, when I get around to making the spindle, I will follow some of his guidance there. I even studied my spindle's book, and was all geared up to do that, and I thought, one more thing, I'm going to go ahead and fix, I'll put some of that, that sealant on one more spot on the locomotive some of this sealant that I got it's a high temperature thread sealant from Permatex that I got at the auto parts store I talked about that before so I had it was actually this fitting that I wanted to put it on that comes out of the steam manifold on top of the locomotive and I started to take it out I realized that I had over tightened this nut onto the um, connection onto onto this piece which used to be silver soldered right here on this valve this is the original valve body 
and uh, realized that because I couldn't loosen it conventionally so I actually grasped the body I used a cloth to protect the ball but grasped the body with some vice grips and I used some larger size wrenches as you can see over there and in the process of loosening it I basically broke the silver solder connection it must not have been the best joint obviously but I am pretty strong honestly and um, with the torque that I got from the vice grips on the body and the wrench on the nut that it actually it cracked the silver solder joint so I took all that apart and it was an interesting experience getting this nut loose off of this piece because they were just crammed on there so I actually had to heat them in with a propane torch and I finally got them loose and then I've cleaned this up and cleaned this up prepared my, my original plan was just to take the valve body apart and re-solder solder it and put it back together now I'll show you something I made a mistake when I was cleaning up the silver solder area here I was trying to clean out the little steam passage here with a Dremel here it is a Dremel grinding thing and it all was going well and then it got away from me and I accidentally marred a little bit of my ceiling surface there so I'm gonna have to spend the rest of the week not only re-soldering this piece these two pieces together but also putting this back in the lathe and luckily I have I checked my old videos I've got this uh, 31 uh, uh, what is it 16 30 second I've got this flat bottom drill that I made specifically for the purpose of machining the bottom of the valve body so I'll be able to do that and then also I had made when I made all these ball uh, quick start valves I did make an extra so what I think I'm going to do is just put the extra one on here and then this one will end up becoming my spare but it's kind of a long-winded introduction here but I will instead of showing the new grinding spindle I'm gonna focus this week on repairing the, the ball valve the bad one replacing the good and I think this time I'm going to use it'd be stupid not to to use some anti-seize on those nuts because they just hold it's it's just a compression that it holds a little ball basically into a cone and holds it together that way the threads are not used for sealing they're just used for bringing the pressure so having some anti-seize on there would be a really good idea so I'll show I think I'll do that this week and I'll add this video to my I have a playlist on making the injector start valves that I started that playlist before I knew how to string videos together and like I do now so I'll, I'll talk more about that as we go along okay I've got the broken valve ready to go I cleaned carefully all the surfaces filed off the um, end that that was broken and needed to be set back in place I've put flux on everything and I've got that ring of silver solder around there and I've got a wet rag here to keep the solder together hopefully it'll keep the base of it cool and I've got it clamped up in the uh, in the vise just to hold it in the proper orientation so hopefully this will work out not worried about singeing the rag if I do but I'm gonna heat this up and and melt that solder and heat the metal up and hopefully make a good joint all right I've just finished the soldering here and you can see the smoke coming off hopefully the wet rag worked did its job we'll see in a minute I'm gonna let it just sit there and cool down then I can take it up and make sure that the joint on the opposite side isn't ruined okay I've got the part in my uh, pickle which is just a hundred percent lime juice that I buy at Walmart I use, either use lime or lemon because it's got a lot of citric acid the nice thing about this stuff is you can reuse it a few times if you don't put anything else in it but I think what this time I'm gonna go ahead and put some baking soda in there and let it fizz up it kind of seems to help with the cleaning action so it's been sitting in there the joints look okay even the old one like the on the left there that was the existing one that didn't need to be repaired the 
repair when I was on the right. And here is the little cloth that I can I used. You can see it got singed along the top and it's come pretty much completely dry now and I had it completely soaked with ice water. So hopefully that trick worked. We'll know if it's uh, airtight and steam tight when we put it all back together but so far so good. Hey, let's liven up the party a little bit. I've got my uh, baking soda here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You add that to the lime juice it fizzes up. Okay creates a little bit of a effervescent thing and scrubbing bubbles help release some of the flux acid and stuff like that that's on there keep adding a little bit more here I think it helps cleaning so I'll continue to let this sit maybe like half an hour total and then I'll start washing it with uh, fresh water I'll show you that how that looks Okay, here's the repaired part after soaking in the lime juice and baking soda and then soapy water. And I just scrubbed it off with this little brush here. That's all I've done so far. I haven't buffed it out. It looks like there's some gaps there, but this is a deep hole, so I'm thinking the solder is down there. It just hasn't filled in like a fillet, but that's okay. I think we'll find out when we leak test it. This is the repaired side. This side, I remember when I was making these things, I put tons and tons of solder on here, so it made a nice fillet. So, but that didn't do me any good on the sides it broke, so we'll see. I'm going to buff this up, and we'll get it ready to put in the lathe. My idea is to put this in the fore jaw, and then carefully center it, and use that flat bottom drill I showed you, which was the original tool that I used to make the flat bottom. Um, just touch it, you know, take a couple thou off, make a new mating surface for the O-rings, and we should be good again. After a basic cleaning, I got out my half 32 taps and die set, and I cleaned up the threads on the outside of the fitting, both and the inside of the nuts. And I've got it placed in a four jaw chuck. This is a special little four jaw chuck that fits in the 5C collet chuck. I thought I'd shoot a video of it before I mount it in the collet chuck. I just have it centered by eyeball and then gently tightened up the four jaws on here. I'll center it carefully in the lathe. Okay folks, now I've got the valve body and the four jaw chuck in the lathe in the 5C collet holder and I used the tap that goes on the, those threads. It's a 7 32 tap here and I put it in with a dial test indicator and I've got it just roughed in within a thou so as, a, as an initial way to center it. I'll come back with a half thou indicator and center it up better tomorrow. Okay I took painstakingly lined it up with the tap in there and centered it in the fore jaw and now I checked it here against the rim. There's indicating a little bit of run out but it's not bad and it's certainly I think well within the limits of what I need for the overing seat so getting ready to just lightly touch the drill. I think I'm only going to take off about 15 thou or so. I just scarred the o-ring seat. Probably can't see it in there. But I just scarred it a little bit and just need to clean it up. Here we are cleaning it up. Just started to make contact. Go in another half thou or so. Pull the drill out. Probably more than enough. Let's see what the hole looks like. The, the O ring surface on the bottom. It's looking pretty good. You'll see as I rotate it around, you can see some flashes of light, so to speak. Um, okay, I hope this shows up as good on the video as it does here. The seat is cleaned up pretty nicely. There's one little gouge I need to take out, so I'm going to go back in and drill just a wee bit more. I can see, or is that actually a gouge or not? Huh. Yeah, 
know, just where that steam outlet vent is, it looks like a little, just a little bit of a gouge. And so I'm just going to take off a few thou more, just kind of remove that ridge. Okay, here's the repaired valve body with the really freshly machined valve seat or o-ring seat you can see in there. So I'm pretty happy about that. I think that's going to work just great. Glad I took the extra time to do that. Still feel stupid that I caused the problem in the first place, but oh well. So, got to clean it out, blow it up, use some WD 40 with a little uh, spray snout there to spray the chips out, and I'll go through it with a pipe cleaner a bunch of times. You can see what's cool is you can see this side with the, the uh, outlet, steam outlet on the top, and that's and over here you see this, oh, it's probably hard to see, but the steam passage is on the bottom part there. And the o-ring, basically there's a plunger with an o-ring and it just makes a seat, makes a seal as it goes up and down. Hey, in case you're interested, I thought I'd do a little video of the reassembly. So here is the center o-ring section here that goes with a unit that I just repaired and that gets threaded in here. I've cleaned it out. I've used pipe cleaner and air and all that. So I've got the chips out. So we can screw this on the top. Just snug that up. And you see that it just works like a plunger and the o-ring sits down there. The steam pressure coming in from one side helps to press it down. And let's see. You go ahead and put on, here's the, the fittings, these little round fittings, and they go inside those cone-shaped holes, and the nuts hold them on, like this. This is basically what I got jammed, which I broke that the one side off accidentally, or just by overuse of brute force. So, here we go. And then you can silver solder a 5 16 inch copper tube inside there. So those parts are ready to go. Now here's the tricky part and kind of cool part, not just kind of. This assembly here, this is the spare one that I'm getting ready to install on my locomotive. It's late now, so on Friday night I'll probably do this tomorrow. Um, but this is this is what, how this lever works. It's just a really cool design that Fred made and it's I think it's kind of like jewelry it's really neat how it works so the part with the hole in it slips over the barrel there and it tightens up on mine I use these tiny little torque screws I'm just gonna put the screw in there not tighten it up tighten it up all the way yet because it It'll need to be loose. I'm going to put it, keep it spare in an old uh, Altoids box. And of course, I put it on the wrong way. <laughs> so, yeah. Hopefully, you can see all this. So, that little collar part goes over, and then this, there's a threaded portion. It screws onto the end of the o-ring stem. So you screw that on while it's still before you tighten down that clamp. I'm not going to tighten it down all the way, but just screw it on enough so that you get the, the right amount of travel for your arm. I'll unscrew it just a little bit because I want the arms to be up a little bit. There we go. Okay, now I'll just tighten this back up again. Not super tight. That's the assembly. So this one will go into the Altoids box as the spare start valve with all its fittings. Give you a good indication of the size of it. Spare quick start valve. It'll stay there. I can put these taps and dies away and tomorrow I will install this one. Hey guys, you might think this is a little silly, but 
I wanted to talk about, I mentioned the blow test, and I don't know if you can see this in here, but the the opening with the the steam valve, like the upper part, that's where the steam comes in, and the outlet is the lower part. So one thing I do with my, my injector start valves is to mark an arrow. That's not a very good arrow, but showing the direction of travel of the steam. And the blow test itself is nothing more than this. I'll put my lips on this, I've cleaned it off, but I'll put it on this end. The valve is closed, and then I'll raise this up, and you'll be able to see, or hear probably, the air coming out. So here we go. <laughs> that's all there is to it for the blow test. So this is the one that's repaired and it will now become the spare cool thing it fits right in the little Altoid box and spare quick start valve okay and here is the what used to be the spare and I had marked I even etched in a little arrow on the bottom of this one and this is the connection here that's going to go into the manifold I'm going to apply some of this thread sealant stuff the high temperature thread sealant to it and I, I had lunch with Fred and my buddies today and talked about using the anti seize on the fine thread things and he said there's no reason not to especially considering the difficulty that I caused myself so I've already put this one together finger tight with a little bit of that copper thread sealant on it I might put a dab more on there just to be on the safe side and I'll put some on the other side before I install this valve into the end of the locomotive I'll bring you back and show you how the installation looks Okay, now here is the former spare reinstalled. I did use, as I've said, you know, the, the liquid, basically liquid Teflon, but the um, high temperature sealant here, I just installed that. I did this carefully to try to not upset the valve this time. I had already pre-threaded this one loosely. The danger with these fine threads, in my opinion, is the, the possibility of cross-threading. So. I had this one loosely threaded in and started, and then this one I started very carefully and, and gently tightened it up. As the Brits say, I nipped it up and <laughs> tightened this one up all the way also. So they're all snug now. I'm just going to let this sit overnight, and tomorrow I'll give it an air test. But honestly, I think that uh, today, I think this will be the last video. Um, I'll, I'm going to test it. I'll do what the air, run the air compressor and use the, the paintbrush with the soapy water. But you've seen how that process works. So I think this will be the last segment of this weekend's video. And um, hope you've enjoyed it. I did want to point out, well I'll, I'll, well, I'll do an intro segment. But check the, if you're interested in this stuff remotely at all, check out the series that I did on the injector start valves. I showed how to make these. There's like 11 videos on there now, so I'll probably add this one to it. This, the playlist is what I'm talking about. So thanks again, everybody. Hope you have a great week, and stay tuned for more. I'll get back on the Russ's projects here for next time.